Hey, Mark here. I just have a fun announcement for you. So we recently started doing these Final Fight episodes, and we've been putting them up with the movies, the regular movie films and flicks episodes. However, the Final Fight episodes people really loved. So we figured that we would start a brand new podcast just called Final Fights, brought to you by Movie Films and Flicks, where it's nothing but final fights in movies, where we discuss every punch, bite, kick, head kick, gut punch, Everything you can think about, we do a lot of research, and they're short episodes. They're probably about 20 to 30 minutes. They're really quick to listen to, and they just talk about all your favorite final fights. So head to iTunes, Spotify, wherever you listen to podcasts, and rate, review, and subscribe, and listen to Final Fights. I think you'll really enjoy it. Thank you. Welcome to Movies, Films, and Flicks. I am Mark Hoffmeyer, and joining me is a woman who always wears amazing scarves while she's fighting zombies. It's Megan Hoffmeyer. I mean, I have quite the scarf collection. You said scarf, right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I do have quite the scarf collection. Now, I read the book. So there's the there, there's a book called The Zombie Survival Guide. And okay. in that who, book... Whose book is that? So it's Max Brooks who okay. wrote it. Oh, yeah. He also wrote World War Z. And so I was like obsessed with those books. I know, I know how to fight zombies. I... You, you've been married to me for a long time. You've been with me for a long time. Yes. And whenever I go into places, I'm like, how do I zombify this? Ever since World War Z brought them on planes, Dawn of the Dead took them into malls, Day of the Dead took them into bunkers, 28 Days Later went into skyscrapers and mansions. I mean, basically zombies have been everywhere. Nowhere is safe. Nowhere is safe. And that's why I actually love Train of Busan so much because it's, you know, on a train. But I read in the Zombie Survival Guide that you should cut your hair because it leaves not much for zombies to... Grab. Oh, so okay. this scarf. Listen, but you're so good at zombie killing. You're basically the Tallahassee from Ooh. Zombie Land of zombie killing. Where's my Twinkie? Exactly. <laughs> but you you have a you have a Twinkie scarf. That's how much you love it. Yep, I have an endorsement from them. <laughs> so we they have they sponsor Twinkies you to kill filling them? the cupboards. Oh my gosh, I love that. All right, so this movie. I've I've been raving about this movie since it came out in 2016, right? Uh, yeah, that sounds about right. I, mean, I just keep talking about this film. I, I wrote about it on Movie Films and Flicks. I said it was a new zombie classic, and I stand by that. I wrote about it for Movie Pilot. I said it was a zombie classic, and I stand by that. I wrote about it in an article for Cracked, and I still stand by that. It's tried and true material. I wrote about horror, the unheralded heroes of horror. That's a quite a mouthful, Megan, to say it out. I've never said it out loud. I've always just written it. You do. You're a fan of the long titles. I do love long titles. But in that one, the conductor I wrote about. And so this conductor in Train of Busan, he's a good man. He is. He's uh, He captures your heart. So it's really crushing when, you know, spoilers, Ugh. he's killed by the, yeah, young the jerky rich guy. Yeah, that guy. So... In, if you look at my notes right there, Megan, and I have semi-coherent notes on this one. Because they're typed. I, I, yeah. <laughs> well, what about these? These are better. I have, I have written, handwritten notes. I mean, the all caps ones I can read. So there's something about this podcast where I do a lot of research. And I, I like to write in notebooks because that way I'm not just staring at computers. But my notes look like a chicken scratched chicken scratch. To be fair, mine look about the same right now. I look like a zombie wrote my notes. Okay. But but I mean, it, a pretty coherent zombie. In my notes, though, Meg, I wrote shithead businessman. <laughs> yeah, he's the C... It's O-O. O-O of the train company, I believe. Yeah, another... another. Uh, uh, I have it in here somewhere. Of another transportation company. Oh, okay. You know what I think about this movie is the zombies, you don't really ever look at them as bad guys. It, it becomes more about Young Sook and the people on the train being the total a-holes that... You know, it becomes more about the human problems, kind of like Dawn of the Dead, kind of like other movies like that, where it's the humans who kind of wreck everything. Yeah, it's interesting you say that because I read an article with... I'm going to lift my paper yeah. oh, dramatically here. here. I read an article where the director, when he was making this, he wrestled with creating something that was real and grounded in reality. He said zombies are prim primarily a Western genre. Yeah. And... There haven't been real blockbuster Korean zombie movies before this. So he tried to make something for Korean audiences that they wouldn't find off-putting or ridiculous, which meant it had to be based in reality. 
Oh, that's neat. Yeah, yeah I thought so. I, I like that right here. He said that, um, yeah, Koreans would find it off-putting. They kind of, yeah, right here. I think, do we find the same article? Maybe. They expect them to be based in realism. This was from Screen Daily. Oh, no, I don't think I got that one. But I like that, though. And I think this, all right, so what we have here is these zombies, right? They're not, I don't think these zombies are based in realism. I mean, remember Night of the Living Dead with the slow-moving zombie? But they're zombies. So what is realistic if you're a zombie? I think for him, because he goes into it a little bit more, is that makeup wasn't going to work as a zombie look for the Korean audience. So they didn't want to cover them a la Walking Dead and a bunch of prosthetics and make them look gaunt. And so we saw a a really quick behind-the-scenes video where they were sort of airbrushing on veins Mm -hmm. to their faces. But other than that, it was really about the movement that they made, the the bone-breaking sort of juddy movements and not making them all up and costumifying them into zombies. Do you want to hear something? You know, so you and I have been full-on researching this. We just watched Soul Station, the animated prequel prequel to this. And then we watched a trailer for Peninsula, which takes place five years later. Now, those zombies are going to be... Cray-cray. Gross. Because they've been decomposing for five years. So I wonder what he's going to do there to make it seem realistic. For these or, audiences. or if he just completely gives up with just that. goes, yeah! I mean, because this movie cost how much to make? So, all right. So right now, as they have it, it was $7.8 million. That's crazy. So when I lived in Korea, the exchange rate was pretty even, right? I mean, maybe a little bit on par with, like, maybe a little bit more for, uh, like, that was 12 years ago, so I don't really know. But so this movie, $7.8 million. I don't know how far that got them with the exchange rate over there. But that's nothing. Even with the exchange rate, that is not expensive right there. And it made me respect this movie more because I mean, for $8 million, that, I, I couldn't have guessed that. I wouldn't have guessed that. I would have said 25 30 easy. So what I'm thinking is that in order to make, like they said, the first Korean zombie blockbuster, they you know made it something appealing to those audiences. Now that there's been more zombie featuring... Things like the wonderful Netflix show Kingdom. Oh, I love Kingdom. About the, what are they, medieval Korean zombies? Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, Go so watch good. it. No, I wouldn't say it's medieval because there's still guns and everything. So this is like 18th century around then. I'm not sure. Okay. But just watch it. Yeah, just watch it. So that is just, now that they're there, now that they've made some more properties and they're getting used to zombies out there, maybe they can make it a little bit nuttier. Ah, so it's like when Marvel started off with Iron, Iron Man. Man. Classic. Or, you know, you got, I guess we're also looking at Blade. He was a vampire hunter and vampires were big in the 90s. Mm-hmm. X-Men, instead of giving him the bright suits, they gave him the leather jumpsuits in the in 2000. Okay, so you kind of yeah. got to baby step your way into a culture. You can't just, you can't go Thor Ragnarok first. Yeah, so now they can be totally next level. Something else the director said in this Screen Daily article was that you can put Americans in a superhero movie in spandex and people are fine with it. But you do something like that in Korea and they're not as sold on it. So they had to be a little bit more realistic. Got it. And you know what? I So I've made you watch a bunch of these films. But if you think about Thirst, right? Or well, you, I don't, you don't want have to think, think about, about Thirst. Well, <laughs> the way I'm saying it, like they keep it very grounded. Like, they keep it in apartments and keep it bloody. They don't, yeah, like... Yeah, it's recognizable things from your real life. It's happening on a train. It's happening in a city. Places yeah. you've seen or you go. And yeah, so, yeah, like the host. It They're comes out of the Han River. They're not fantasy Yeah, there locations. it is. They, they kind of keep it real. They, they go with tried and true locations. And I think I told you this. And I'm happy that I never... I'm happy that I never was on a train in Korea when I was living there. <laughs> when I would go on a train by the Han River... Uh, or a bus or whatever, I would look into the water and be like, come on, monster. Come out. A la I, the host? Yeah, I was like, start attacking the populace. Come on. Come on. Like, that's how much I love that movie. Funny. I was like obsessed with with seeing that. But I, yeah, I guess with this film, I, I kind of like one really th- one thing about it is you get the kind of early melodrama with, with the father. Uh, oh, Seppu, and his ex-wife yeah, and, and his like daughter. The daughter Suan, he missed the recital. But I think... All that stuff builds up to, well, he says you have to finish things to his daughter. And yeah. I kind of like how this movie becomes about you finishing things. You must finish things. what you start. Yeah. And this movie becomes about finishing things. At the end, he got her on that train to Busan. Like, she got there. So they finished it. So it's kind of neat when they're able to tie these things together. And you know what I was thinking? You know, this director, uh, uh, Young, Young Sang Ho, he, he started off in animation. So I wonder... I know they had a lot of problems on set. You should watch the behind-the-scenes videos because they're fun. There's mini treadmills. 
and there's zombies. Oh, and oh like, running alongside yeah. the train and just... And there's some crazy stuff out there. They found really cool ways for camel work. So, By out there, I mean YouTube. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, do, remember on the behind the scenes videos where they put that big uh, pipe on the like store, like where all the luggage normally goes in a train and they could run with it? Oh, that's I didn't really, see that one. That's a really cheap way to shoot. And it, like, if you can steady cam it up, you can rig it, you know, get the gribs to rig something nice. You have a nice steady shot. So that's how they were able to get a lot of the fluid motion in there, putting that on there. You don't have to set up sticks. You can move it that's like, cool. pretty quick to move. And you said they took the roof off the train too? Yeah. I mean, they moved the sides on some scenes. Like they took off the sides. They took off the roof. They kind of worked with whatever tricks they had. They shot outside in Busan with actual trains. And then they were on set with, you know, like parts of trains. Yeah. I think I saw that where it's got the door to the train and some windows. And you're basically seeing one segment, but the rest is taped off with green. Mm-hmm. And That's you, still pretty cool. Do you think so? I mean, other people have made the move from animation to um, live action. So we love the Leica, the guy who went and went and directed Bumblebee. I can't think of his name right now, but he also did Kubo and the Two Strings. Oh, Travis Knight. Yeah, Travis Knight. He was awesome. used to storyboarding and used to like seeing every frame. Brad Bird went from The Incredibles to Mission Impossible: Ghost Protocol. So oh, sometimes, that's a good one. Sometimes I wonder if... That sandstorm. I mean, you can't really compare Pixar movies to anything else, but you have to... It's a great sandstorm. It's well, you have to everywhere. think things through step yeah. by step and how it's going to look, and you have to have your camera angles. We watched Soul Station. I think it's worth noting that this is this director's first live action film, so he had that animation background, but this is his first live action film. He made it on a budget, and he made a, a veritable blockbuster. They said that the, the actor said that they lived a dorm life in Busan for two months. Oof. That's not long. That is... All right, so let's say, like, I don't know, how many weekdays in a month? Like, so there's 30 days, you take out eight, like, let's just say 24. So they shot for 48 uh, days. Yeah. That's not bad at all. I mean, that's a really easy shoot. That's like seven weeks right there. Yeah, that wouldn't happen here, would no. it? No, and it's just... That's a really quick shoot. And I, I wonder, too, and also seeing the behind-the-scenes footage on this film, and I know my math was off. I'm just shooting from the hip here. So <laughs> don't don't be counting it up in your car right now, whoever you are. On your fingers. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> One, two. So, uh, Put both hands on the steering wheel. I, I What I liked about this film is the crews on these films seem really chill. So, you know... I worked on a lot of film sets, and I don't know, it seemed more relaxed <laughs> in Korea. I mean, I don't know. the, the seemed... footage didn't look quite relaxed. I mean, between takes, they would sort of be doing stuff on their phone, and yeah. no one was yelling. I mean, I wasn't there, I don't know. But it looked really relaxed in the YouTube videos. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I wonder how, you know, I know there are some film sets, like, for instance, Clint Eastwood, he shoots six-hour days, and if, when you're on that set, you can't fluff around. Steven Spielberg, he's able to keep his budget slow and make so many movies, because his crew is on their A game and they can shoot fast. You don't waste his time. So with these crews, I wonder if the competition in Korea is so fierce that, you know, you got to work really hard. But either way, it looked like a really relaxed set. And, and, and the end product from a guy who's only done animation to what we have now, I think, is really well thought out. And the action scenes in this movie, I was just thinking about this, Meg. Yeah. And we never we never really talked about this before, but when I was... Watching the kind of action scenes, they really, I like how they, there's progressions to them. So they get on the train and then there's the initial attack and then they get off the train and then they're split up. So then they have to go, then they have to go and get them and then they have to get back to the front of the train. Mm -hmm. And then once they get to the front of the train, the problems are there and then they get into what, Dejan and there's an accident and they have to get on a train to Busan. So, oh yeah, there two. There's a couple of trains collided on the on track, and, and so they have to switch trains. Conductor is such a great guy. Oh, he does I know. such a good job. He just runs off that train and goes and finds an engine that'll work. <sighs> he's he's the conductor that could. But the, watching this movie, it I, I like the the really. It, it's a smart first. You know, they get them off the train, then you split them up, and then you you get the rescue scene, and then you get them going back. Like it's just a smart way to handle horror and action and i think you, you you've been hearing about this for a long time since 2015 i've included these in random awards i've written about them in posts my favorite 21st century horror films i wrote one of my favorite moments of horror of most any action film really this century is just seeing people they get off the train for their first stop and they are going down an escalator mm-hmm. and they oh, come yeah. across all the military folks who have been turned into zombies but just imagine that fear you're going towards zombies who can sprint 
and you're going down on an escalator. I mean, they're very strong zombies. They bash glass until yeah. it breaks. I mean, these... Like-